so several several storylines to get into this one, man. Um, first and foremost, did you ever think? <laughs> did you ever think that there would be a game where Frank Nilakina was the MVP? Was 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 we needed Frank tonight to bail us out? What a game by Frank, man. Talk to me, man. What what'd you Literally think, Literally needed him. It's crazy because I remember, you know, early in the season, late in the clock, I'm like, Frank, get it to RJ. Come on. Let RJ figure it out. Tonight, you know, RJ struggled. We'll yeah. get to that as well. But I genuinely was like, just give it to Frank. I know he's not going to gonna do something smart. His handle, so much better. His confidence is there. You know, I would argue, I know he's done a lot of work to get here. You know I mean? It's not like this was always here. You can clearly see he's playing faster. And he's definitely doing things that Tiz has always emphasized him doing, moving the ball up the court, et cetera, et cetera. But this is the, the run he's getting now, it just happened to work out this way, is the run I think you always needed. Let him play. Let him not feel like he ha- he's going to get benched if he makes a mistake. Let him go free. Frank, as, ga- as games go on and as he gets more confident, he pulls more things out of his locker. That's why I'm saying, like, people talk about Tony Allen as a ceiling. Tony Allen wasn't in the NBA 21, and he wasn't do, pulling step-back jumpers like that. I'm not saying Bro. Frank is going to be any kind of offensive juggernaut, but I see you've seen this with guys like Siakam, even with Giannis. When these guys who are projects start getting more confident year by year, they just said, a- start adding stuff you would have never expected. So I'm like, Frank is 21, man. Let these kids rock. And I'm glad he had this game tonight. But sometimes, sometimes he does this stuff, and it doesn't show up on the box score. But he's it showed up tonight. tonight. It showed up yeah. tonight. And from the Big opening time. tip, Frank put his mark on the game. It was Luka Doncic. You, we knew he was going to be in for a battle. And yep. he stepped up right away, man, and went toe-to-toe for him, picked him up 94 feet. Listen, Luka Doncic still ended up at 30-something points. Obviously, that's a phenom. Um, but Frank made him work. On the offensive end, he did a great job getting the guys involved. He was... Con- the confident Frank, man. The confident yeah. Frank. When we say when when Frank is confident, everything else picks up, a- and that's what we saw tonight, man. Yeah, Frank is a multiplier. He's one of these weird guys. It's a rare trait that just by you doing the right thing on the court, other players seem to smarten up. Yep. Why wow, you always see vets talk about him? You know, when we spoke True. to we met uh, Steve Mills and Perry in D.C. for preseason, and when we Spoke to Mills, something he said that was interesting. He said, I know the comments about to go, the, the chat's about to go crazy about Mills because I said his name. But what he said, I liked. He said, you know what? Frank is loving the amount of vets on the team. And Frank always struck me as like this weird kind of old vet, old soul, Benjamin Button type dude. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, he just wants mm-hmm. to do the right thing out there. He's, he's like an old guy in a young guy's body. And now that we have vets and, you know, you see him and Taj, I love that. Bro. You know? And... and- yes, and- Smart yeah, guys out yeah. there making smart decisions on both sides of the yeah, ball. Yeah, and, and I'm going to get to Taj in a second, man. But like you said, when you first um, started, we, because RJ didn't have it tonight, we truly needed um, Frank out there tonight. RJ didn't have it tonight. Randall was just in his turnover bag, and he was ready to lose it for us. We Frank was that calming force, bro. He, he was. Frank he was the stabilizing force Ooh. on tonight's win because that game was about to break down in the, in the late third quarter. Uh, oh. When they when they put in Portis, Iso, and Kev um, defensively, and 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 Luke and, and Porzingis were still out there, they broke down, and they, we had a twelve point lead. It quickly evaporated to four to close out the quarter, and uh, I I thought <laughs> again, I know the, the thing you don't think is like, damn, we need Frank in here right now <laughs> to to save the game, bro. We need Frank in here to save the game. Unbelievable, man. Uh, unbelievable. Both fans running back, getting blocks on. It's it's insane. The to chase watch down like block on oh Tim Hardaway God. Jr. Come Listen, on, man. What? Come I, on, I, I man. never liked Timmy anyway, so that made me dumb. Oh, enough. man. That was beautiful. I, I, and Timmy was building the brick house early, man. He, You know, he, he wanted was. the story to be about him. He was all in his in his feelings. He was tight. Oh, oh, you know, Timmy, he's an emotional dude, right? Yeah. He, yeah. One night he's there, one night he's there. You can't trust him. You can't trust him, but... What Frank did tonight, and this is crazy because the impact he's having defensively, he still has so much weight he can put on. Yep. He's still he's still not getting respect from the rest yep. at all. Yep. Right? These are things that come with defensive players over time. This kid is 21. I struggle. There are a couple killer dudes out there. Matisse Tybul in Philly's killing it. You know, Jonathan Isaac is a beast as well. Yeah. In terms of perimeter defenders, 
like since I've been watching basketball, I can't remember how many guys have been this intelligent on that end. It's not just like aggression or, you know, how Shumpert used to play D pretty hard. Frank is like a genius almost defensively with how he rotates and knows what to do. And now he's put, it's coming on the offensive end as well. That's your point guard. And you know what? Fizzdale's got to say it. I'm it's like, just, if you want to. coming along, say, man. You got to say it, Fizz. Like, lock it in. It, let it, people it's know. It's coming along. The, the chase down block Ooh. on Timmy. <laughs> <laughs> Coming back for the op wide open three. Yo, Frank Frank was in his bag tonight, man. Frank was absolutely... I mean, you saw him pestering Porzingis a couple times on the switches and making it hard for Porzingis out there. And, you know, give credit. Porzingis was in his bag tonight. He he, he was he looked good. He looked good. Um, That's KP. Yeah. Listen, the, the arc to me with the KP thing is not necessarily is he good or not. We saw him at the, we saw him at the Garden. Yeah. The dude has a crazy potential. But it's, do you want to have to max that guy? And given all the baggage, how would it have turned out? Honestly, tonight gave me a lot of... Cl- I mean, I had closure in the sense of I didn't really care about it anymore. Mm-hmm. But watching him, I didn't even feel anger towards him tonight, to be honest. I was like, KP is cool, let him rock yeah. out. Like, nah, I was yeah, it's, it's no hard feelings, man. It's no hard yeah. feelings. It, again, it's just, uh, you know, it, it didn't work out. It didn't work out between the two sides. We'll probably never find out what the truth is until maybe he's retired. And by then, we probably won't care. And it just is what it is. We move on. Um, yep. th- there were other several other storylines in tonight's game. And Marcus Morris, let, let's go to Mook. Y- you know, once again, Mook, we, we call him Dollar Tree version of Mello. Once again, <laughs> Mook in his bag, almost 50% for the field, 29 points, 9 boards, uh, 5 or 6 from the line. Mook re- definitely recovered from the Detroit game, man. What do you think about Mook tonight? Mook, we got to upgrade him to, to, to Whole Foods Mellow or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is the MVP of the team right now, man. Forget Julius. We, we need Mook's offense out there, man. We, we need him. And you consider, right, you know, Julius, Mook, and Portis were the three, you know, most expensive signings. Mook is the one completely living up to that right now. Like, had Julius been executing it as Mook had so far, we'd be over the moon with Julius, calling him an all-star. Mook is playing above and beyond. You know, I know he's still going to be the main trade candidate. And on both ends, whether he stays with us or whether he gets traded, what he's doing now is going to be good for the franchise. He's like, I think he's going to have a career high year in terms of maybe all his counting stats. Uh, he's getting opportunity here to show Yo, up. He's, be- he's beasting right now, bro. He- he's beasting. He's What's he, beasting. Like 29, 29 points 29 tonight? points again, man. Man. Yeah, 29 he's- points again. Here we are thinking that the all-star on the team was going to be Randall. <laughs> it, it could be Mook in, in this early stretch, man. I'm telling you, this this dude is is on fire right now. Yeah, and you know, it's someone you could trust. I know we have a lot of complaints about the ISO offense at times, but you could you can see it getting better game to game. But sometimes you need a bucket. You know what I mean? And to be able to throw it in a Mook, then hit a step back. I mean, he's hitting contested jumpers like it was nothing today. Yo, hit he was crit- looking Ooh. like a bootleg <laughs> mellow, man. It's crazy. I'm like, yo, where did this come from? <laughs> it, it was crazy, man. It was crazy. Unsung Hero Award goes to Taj, without a doubt. Um, back to what you were saying, Taj. This was Taj's best game of the season. We, we were down Mitch, obviously going up against a 7-3 KP. Uh, we, we needed that size out there. I think Taj, and with along with Frank, set that tone defensively to start the game. Um, he played tough. And in the offensive end, man, he was just in the right spots, getting guys in order, setting the screens like he did in the Detroit game very well. I thought Taj was unsung hero tonight, man. What do you think? Ta- Taj is my guy. I was telling people all summer, listen, people were acting like he was just a throwaway. Like, Guys that are smart, that have been in the league, that have been on winning teams, they're in the NBA for a reason. Todd Gibson, like you said, he knows where to be. On a young team where you see guys like Mitch sometimes just kind of not knowing what he's doing out there. Even Randall, oh, you know, we get to him as oh, well Jesus, with his struggles. <laughs> There's a lot going on there. But Taj knows the right place to be at the right time. And you put him and Frank out there, you at least have two guys out there who literally don't care about anything but winning. So whatever, they're doing the little things, they're hedging on screens, they're, they're putting that extra effort, they're moving the ball. Having those two guys and then you combine it with guys who can make shot makers, athletic guys, you can really start building something. And I think, you know, when Mitch comes back, Mitch and Frank, hopefully you see Mitch's IQ improve as well. Because you got such an anchor at the one and five defensively that the Knicks could literally be like a top five, top ten defense for a decade off of those two. Because those two are talented on that end. And Taj, I love what we saw from him tonight. You know, Fizz did well. Got to give him credit, letting Taj rock in this matchup. Like you said, 
understanding what he was going against with KP. Yeah. So I think every you know I I don't want to see Portis Randall Mook again. Let's it's tough, that. man. <laughs> it's tough on both ends. And Portis, give credit. Portis had a solid first half when he came in off the bench, and thankfully Fizz said he wants to lock him in on that bench roll. And I'm that was that's the best thing I heard Fizz say all season long. Is keep Portis off coming off the bench, man. That's that's the role that I like for him. And listen, I think overall, the, the way we set the tone tonight also is that uh, we asserted ourselves um, from a physical standpoint. You know, Dallas is more of a finesse team. They really didn't have anybody that could, that could hold our bigs in the paint. And between Mook, between Randall, between Portis, I thought they did a really good job asserting themselves in the paint. Yeah, that was a talking point before the game. Obviously, the Knicks having some insight into KP, it felt like how we matched up with KP ended up setting the tone for everything else. So they inserted their will. You know, Bobby's still really slow on defense sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes he's yeah. killing me. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, like I, I, I think I tweeted a couple of weeks ago that uh, Bobby Portis plays defense sometimes. Like if you're watching something and the audio is like a second ahead of the words of the of the person speaking on TV and it just feels a little bit off. That's how it <laughs> feels sometimes on defense. It's like he, he think he has the right idea, but then like he stepped a, a second too late. But like you said, he gave us some good energy. You know, it's that energy we're talking about. Get him in that six-man role. And for Fizz, I love to hear Fizz say things that sound like commitments, right? Yeah. Because that's one thing with Fizz. Right. That's what I'm saying. Never that know. sounded like a commitment to me. So yeah. I loved it. I, I love what I heard from Fizz tonight, man. Right. And I'm interested to hear his post game and the coming days because you can definitely see things coming together in terms of the lineup and what and rotations. You know, Dot and Trier, we're going to see how we work them in. Now, yeah. Dennis is back. So we still got a little bit more work to do. Yeah. Dotson and uh, Trier coming in for Ellington, man. What do you think? I thought Dotson gave us some pretty decent minutes. A- even ISO, I thought in the first half, they gave us some pretty decent minutes. Um, I thought we, we should have looked to go to Dot for some defense out there when things started to collapse in the third and early fourth. But luckily, we, we came back and won. Yeah, Dot, I've been waiting for him to play. You know, Wayne has been struggling a little bit last few games. Um, I think Fizz gave Wayne like a decent run. <laughs> You know, I mean, if it had gone on another couple more games, I think I would have started getting really upset. <laughs> Dot, you know, Dot worked his way back from the shoulder stuff. And honestly, if you look at the little spot minutes he's been getting, he's been solid every single time. And, and listen, Dot and Frank have some chemistry, so we're going to see a little bit of that. I think Zodanite, we saw, you know, we saw some good, some bad, but also he's still playing out of position. I think, you know, getting Dennis back is going to be huge, giving us a change of pace. Um, coming up with the second unit, giving RJ a break from ball handling, yeah. not first saying Trier out of position. So what I really want to see, man, is just Fizz stick with something. I see you're getting you, – you can see, you know, even with some of the bad losses, things are making more and more sense. When he gets there, just please stick with it. Let that team run for a while. Don't be doing this up and down thing because I just – he did it last year, and we kind of gave him a pass, but you could already hear from the fan base. It's not going to fight this year. No, nah, it's not going to fly. Definitely not going to fly. Um, what did we say? We said RJ didn't have it. Dot ISO coming off the bench instead of Ellington. And and you know what? I, like I said, we, we I rode with Ellington in the beginning. I understood what, what you know Fizz saw in trying to get him some playing time. But like I said, if he doesn't have it, I, I, I'd like to go see Dotson uh, for extended minutes. Um, first half, he, he did all right. Second half, we, they, we never went back to him. But um, like I said, that's all for naught. Of course, Terry, this was going to come down to free throws, man. Oh, God, You knew, man. you knew. You knew, ultimately, whether it was today or tomorrow, this game was going to come down to free throws, our Achilles heel, number one Achilles heel of the season, and we almost blew it, man. When are we going to make our free throws? RJ was terrible from the line. Uh, Randall was atrocious from the line. We saw Taj miss two in the clutch. I mean, cardiac Knicks, man. Cardiac right, Knicks, man. man. We can't even get an easy one. If you're 18 for 31. 18 for 31 from the strike. Insane. 58%. And this has been a trend all season long. You know, we saw early in the season when we weren't losing as badly the past couple games. You, you add up the free throws, not even a get 100%, getting to 80-something percent, we win that game. And tonight, it would have been an ultimate choke job yeah. at that point because that was insane. You know, you know, even when RJ went up, I was kind of like, all right, RJ, it's clutch time, it's money time. I knew you're gonna get it. His free throws. I've been trying to ignore it, but it's definitely nah, it's, it's it. It's a it's, it's a real it. issue. It's a real uh, issue. Yeah, I could see him shooting fifty percent this season, if even. And 
it's something he's going to have to work on. But it's all focus. And with, with RJ, you know, I'm not worried. That's the thing with him. I'm not worried about anything because I feel like the more he gets knocked down, the more motivated he's going to be to I fight agree. back. I agree. And, and work out and make sure it's not a weakness anymore. Yeah. So all these lumps are good for him. Look, RJ is getting the rookie treatment. Yeah. He got the Kyrie. Oh, he was getting no calls tonight, boy. They were got, throwing him all over the place, man. He got no calls tonight. He got the Kyrie step back. He got the um the Jason Tatum winner. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. he had a rough night tonight. Yeah. KP blocked him a couple of times. He did. KP did block him, man. He's getting so, indoctrinated into the NBA quite nicely <laughs> for sure. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing a little bit of the issues that you might have had with him pre-draft, which is he doesn't have elite athleticism, and he's using his strength to get to the rim a lot. That's it, yeah. You know, he can definitely, you can definitely going to be a guy who gets blocked as, until he gets a little bit stronger. And, you know, you, you saw more of the struggles tonight, but he still competed. You know, I, I like to see him go through these games. And look, still eight boards. That's one thing. He's going to rebound every game. Yeah. He's going to give the effort. That's I'm it, not man. worried about him, but I got to ask you, this is now like three or four games in a row of RJ struggling. You want to, how about those minutes? What, what, yeah, hey, listen, the, the, <laughs> the minutes has been a hot topic since earlier this week, man. And, and you know, we, we, you've seen so many people on both sides of the argument, whether it's players, former players on both sides, uh, you know, the quote unquote experts, the scouts and all of that. Um, we'll see. Let's give it some more time and see. I, I think the way RJ's game is predicated, the fact that he, he's really not uh, efficient with his jump shot, these nights are going to come. I think these nights yeah. will come more often than not. I'm not sure if it's a product of he's tired, or he doesn't have his legs, or he, he just had an off night. You know what I mean? But So let's see what happens Sunday against Cleveland. Let's see what yeah. happens Sunday against Cleveland. Cleveland can't defend. So that's a great game for RJ to get back in the groove. You know, yeah. hopefully it's a nice, solid game. You can get some guys some run. I mean, Dennis is going to be back. Dennis so will that, be back, you know, yeah. That would be a nice, you know, easy win if there's such a thing yeah. in Nick's in Nick land. <laughs> hopefully, man. And, and last <laughs> takeaway before we get to the phone. Salute to everybody in the chat once again. Hit that thumbs up on this Friday night. Nick's. Hit that thumbs up for a win, man. Let's get let's hit a record tonight for a win. You know these things don't come uh so often here on this <laughs> show. So so let let's uh let's hit that thumbs up. We got Terry in here. Jay Ellis always misses the wins. So that's why when Terry said he was gonna come through for the show, I had a good feeling we were gonna get this W. <laughs> because I'm Jay Jay Ellis always misses the wins, man. I'm telling you. I'm going to trash him next time I see him. I'm telling you, man. It's been him. People chanting for Dolan. It's been it's Jay been Ellis. Jay Ellis. It's been Jay Ellis the whole time. Uh, <laughs> lastly, man, if, if Julius would just slow down, bro. When you sighed, I knew exactly what you were about if, to talk about. <laughs> if Julius would just slow down, Julius. Oh, my God. I mean, Julius had us begging for Frank to take control of the <laughs> game, Terry. That's man. where it's gotten to, man. That's, <laughs> That's where it's gotten to. Uh, listen, Julius looks like a fullback. <laughs> like they, oh they just took God. a fullback and they put him on the court. And you could see he's athletic, but he's just out there bumbling, fumbling. Oh, my he God. Looks like a, he looks like a football player out there. If, I mean, listen. If I, he would just Winston, slow down, bro. Yeah, he needs to take a beat. You saw, which, which I like to see from Frank. Later on, I saw Frank calling for the ball. Julius still yes. ignored him, yeah. but at least Frank was calling. <laughs> yeah, I like to see. I want to see. You know, I think as Frank plays better, hopefully, and you know, Chris emphasizes it, he'll get the ball in that case because it's scary watching Julius bring the ball up. Oh man, I'm, just, I'm already I'm bracing for the worst. Oh man, and, and, already... and you know, I don't know. I don't know whose fault is it. Is it Fizz's fault for running that running those plays, or is it Frank? Because some of that time, it's Frank. Like as soon as he's getting over the half court line, he's passing it to Julius. And it was a couple times down the stretch in the fourth. I'm like, Frank, keep the ball, man. Do not give it. And then Julius is taking it from the top of the key and, and trying to go with it. Yeah, listen, it's, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to see because Julius was doing some of that even with Peyton. Now, maybe not as much. You know, I think it feels to me sometimes, too, that maybe Fizz has really simplified it on offense for Frank um, where, to the point where, you know, Fizz said a couple of days ago, that Frank um, Frank is doing exactly what he wants him to, mm -hmm. and that 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 cross that half court pass that he makes definitely seems by design most of the time. But you know, today Frank, when he hit that step back jumper, that was Oof. him making a call. Oof. You know what I mean? So now on 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 when it comes to setting it up, and I, I can see Frank likes to get people organized. Oh yeah, he knows where he knows where people should be. So what you want to see as he gets better and as he grows is him demanding that ball and the guys on the team respecting him enough. 
I could see a guy like Morris doing it because I saw Morris and Frank in the post game, and you could see like the respect is there. Yeah, Julius, I don't think it's there yet. Slow Julius, down, just, bro. Yeah, slow but you gotta down, slow down. Man, please, gotta, man. Like he's like a freight truck. He's running in. I'm just like, oh god, Wait, man. I, the, you know, I I already have a love hate relationship with Portis. Like that's the one guy that you know. Like tonight he had a great game. Sunday night he'll probably be terrible. I can't <laughs> deal with Julius being that guy either, man. Just just one knucklehead on the team, man. We we could only afford that, bro. We, all right. I mean, Julius is doing too much. That's really what it is. He's just doing way too much. Way too I mean, much. I, I thought Julius would get 20 and 10, hardly handling the ball. Yeah. Like, I literally thought him just being a force under the rim. Right. Some quick moves, some putbacks would get him to 20 and 10. I, but like I said, I really want to see when we get a real point guard back. Because right now, Frank, after when Frank goes out, we're struggling in terms of who's going to be running the offense. True. So getting Peyton and DSJ back, we at least get some more evidence as to whether it's just like a Frank thing, helping Frank through the offense because he's not a breakdown point, you know, type of point guard. Mm-hmm. Or is this just a long-term fan from pl- uh, plan from Fizz where maybe Fizz thinks that if he lays the groundwork with Julius now, at some point later this season, now Julius is this killer point forward and you can't stop him. Yeah. You know, because I, I, I'll say this, if that is what Fizz believes, then at least that makes sense to me. Right. Because if it's not that, then I'm like, what's going on? 